Design Before we dig into the design of our REST API, I would like to discuss some of the basic but often overlooked REST API design principles. Let's go through each of them quickly. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. And this is how it's explained in Wikipedia. REST-compliant web services allow the requesting systems to access and manipulate textual representations of web resources by using a uniform and predefined set of stateless operations. Simplifying further, a REST API communicates with clients in terms of resources on which a client could perform operations such as read or retrieve, create, update, and delete. So, the basic principle number one is resources are nouns. A resource could be anything that we expose to our client through the REST API. Some examples are customer, product, quote, price, order, comment. These are all nouns, obviously, but it is important to remember that when designing the URLs, which we'll see in a moment. Here are some examples of resource URLs. Example.com slash products. Stackoverflow.com slash questions. This is a real one. What we don't want to do with URLs is to add verbs in front of the resource, such as example.com get products or stackoverflow.com slash list questions. This is not how REST compliant URLs are built. Basic principle number two. Always use plural nouns for resources in URL. The same examples we saw earlier. Use products, questions, not product or question. Basic principle number three. Use HTTP methods appropriately. A REST compliant web service has a predefined set of stateless operations and those are the HTTP methods. Use GET for retrieving post for creating, put for updating, and delete for deleting a resource. These are the verbs that applies to a resource. Basic principle number four, appropriate use of HTTP status codes. Some common codes are 200 meaning just okay, 201 for created, 204 no content. This could be used for a delete. All 200 codes mean request was processed without any issues. 400 codes means some client error, such as 400 is bad request, 401 is unauthorized, 404 a very common one which is not found. Last but not least, HETIOS, which stands for hypermedia as the engine of application, simply means to use links for navigating the API. Comments API design. If the resource was independent, the URLs would look like this. Get method for slash comments would return a list of all comments. Slash comments slash ID, which is the comment ID, would return a particular comment. Post slash comments would create a comment. Put slash comments slash id would update a particular comment. Delete slash comments slash id would delete a comment. But in this case, comment is more of a sub-resource because a comment always belongs to a post. You can handle this in different ways, but it is a matter of personal preference or if you're working in a team, you could discuss and decide which approach to use. So this is how I designed the URLs. Get and post URLs would be posts slash ID, which is the ID of the comment, and then slash comments. I'm not allowing comments to be edited, so put will not be used. Delete would be slash comments slash ID, which is the ID of the comment. Application design. The application code is organized in three layers, repository, service, and controller. The controller layer holds the API classes, which would serve the incoming requests. 
The service layer is where the business logic is happening. The controller will delegate all the business logic to the service layer. The repository layer is for exchanging data with the database. That means it consists of all the repository interfaces which the service classes would use to access the database.